What's going on everyone? This is Damon from CCID GFX and in this tutorial I'm going to go over how to do an organic growth animation using Octane Scatter that looks something like this. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to start with a sphere. I'm going to turn on garage shading with lines, make it icosahedron, and uh, I think we'll go with uh, 50 segments. And then we will grab a displacer object, put it as a child of our sphere, go into our shading, add some noise, and in the noise, we're going to use wavy turbulence, make it 300 by, we'll say, 80. And then we're going to go into our object. We're going to go to intensity. And we're going to crank this sucker up. It's like 250. Now, that doesn't look very, well, I mean, it looks kind of organic, I guess, but not really. It doesn't look good. So how we're going to fix that is we are going to put that inside of a smoothing, or we're going to add a smoothing object. And we're going to see, go up to about 80 on the stiffness, about 20 on the iterations. Now, we can get a little smoother with this if we want, and that's something we can we can add in for the final animation, but I wouldn't recommend while setting up to do this, but that would obviously be subdivision surface, which makes it really nice and smooth. But again, for our purposes in setting this up, it's going to be very heavy. So we'll turn that off for now. We're going to set our frames to 300, because we're going to make a 10 second animation at 30 frames per second. We're going to go back into our displacer, back into our shading, back into our noise. We're going to add animation speed of 1 with a loop of 1. And the reason we do that is so we get this. Then we're going to go back up 1, and we're going to go into our fall off. We're going to add a sphere fall off. We're going to make it about 250, 250, 250, and crank up our fall off. And then if you see, that's going to give us our desired effect. So what we're going to grab now, we're going to go to our coordinates, go back to the very beginning, and we're going to set this puppy to I don't know, minus 350. Mix it about at the beginning of it. Yeah, pretty much at the beginning of it. And then go to our final frame and set it at 350. We're also going to, in our timeline, set it to linear interpolation. And if you want to get your timeline, I have mine set up in here. You just go to window, timeline, and it'll do the same thing. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll pause this because it'll slow it down. So if we go through this, pretty cool, organic, fluidy. Also, if we want to... You know, what's cool about the displacer is it is parametric in the sense where, um, let's see, let's change things. Uh, it's something to like really shoot out. There we go. Something that kind of shoots out in there. Let's see. We'll keep that like that. So we've got that. And yeah, we can again, we'll check it with the subdivision. Animates pretty fast, but once we get the uh, once we get the cloner on there or the scatter on there, that's when things will slow down. But we may turn it back on for final rendering. So we're going to leave this here for now, and we're going to add a octane scatter. Where if you don't have your setup on the side like mine, you can go over into your live viewer window, go to objects, go to octane scatter, and add an octane scatter. We are going to drag the sphere into the scatter, which will now. Now by default. Octane scatter creates spheres and whatever you're scattering it on. But obviously if you want to scatter different things, which we are going to use spheres in this instance, you want to grab a sphere, drop it in there. It's going to go crazy for a second because the spheres are really big. I'm going to drop this down to about maybe psychosahedron. And again, depending on the speed of your computer, um, you're going to depend. I mean, you may not need to have it all up at 15. I'm just doing it so that they're nice and smooth. And then we're going to change this to surface. 
which already kind of offsets things. Now, this is something I recently asked about um, online because one problem that Octane Scatter has is it doesn't animate over a, sur over a surface well. It'll pop around. So if we kind of turn this on, I don't know if you can tell or not. Well, they're not really doing it yet. They're actually sticking to it, which is odd and nice. But once we get into the original, once we get into the more of the animation, you might start to notice the popping. But this might not work. It could just be a, a fluke. So we're going to add about 5,000 of those guys. I think maybe it's when you're animating them themselves. Scale these guys up. We're going to add noise in here. For the noise, we're going to choose electric. And we're going to leave it at default for now. We might even change the uh, seed so it's not standard. Now, what's cool about Octane Scatter is it works with C4D's native effectors. So if we go in here and add a plane effector, it's not going to do anything. Because the only caveat is... Even if you hold down Alt, it's not going to automatically become like with a cloner it would. So you have to go into the effectors, drag it in there. You'll see everything kind of goes nuts. Also, I'm going to change my uh, my view here to square 2K. Just gives us more room to work with. So we're going to go into our plane effector. In the parameter, we're going to turn off the position. Check the scale. Check uniform scale. We're going to go minus 1. And then in the same fashion, it has its own falloff. So we'll set this falloff to sphere. And they'll come back. <clears throat> Do the same thing. We'll set this size to 250. And we're going to leave the falloff at 50% there. So then with that one, now you can kind of see the movement. So we're going to do the same positioning and keyframing. So the coordinates, we're going to go... Minus 350. <clears throat> Set a keyframe. Go to the end. Go to 350. Set a keyframe. Also in the follow-up, what you want to do is you want to hit invert. So that way, it draws them on instead of the opposite of when it's off. Also in the scatter, what we're going to do in the distribution is we're just going to add like 5 keep away kind of helps a little bit uh, but that creates a little more gaps in between it so in order to fill those gaps we're going to copy our scatter by holding control drag and we're going to make these spheres a little smaller we'll change the seed and add a lot more of them and basically leave everything the same so now We have a bunch of little guys in there. And I think we can even go bigger on these spheres. Like maybe we'll go up to 10. Wait, we don't need to. One second. So something else that you can do. And again, this looks really great for what it is, for how it's set up. This is totally doable. Like you don't need to really do anything special. But if you happen to have Grayscale Gorilla's signal plugin, which I do, um, you can actually animate the, the uh, size of the spheres that, that are cloning on so that they're pulsating while they're moving across. So in order to do that, you can go up to Tags or right-click and go to Signal. And we're going to grab the Scale. Drop that in there. For Modifiers, we're going to add a Sign. And we're going to turn off all the negative and positives and turn these up to 5. Now we've got some really nice big sizes. And... They'll change size. And we'll do the same thing for our little guys. Right click, signal, grab our scale, click on that, set that to sign, negative, 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 and make those bigger as well. And the same thing will happen. Which is just gives us a bit of a more insane organic feel to it. Let's go ahead and add a camera and turn it on and we'll reset the PSR. In the camera settings I want to go with a uh, 20 millimeter focal lens on the coordinates drag back on the Z and the way you want to test the I guess the maximum you know distance you want to have is like for instance that goes outside 
We want to keep this framed in. So we'll drag this back. So everything stays within the frame. Then we'll go into our settings and we'll turn on the imager. We're just going to set this up now so I don't forget. I'm going to choose Ectochrome in this. And again, this is all about aesthetic. This is about what you want in your, how you want yours to look. This is just how I'm setting up mine, showing it to you guys. So now we're going to add a Octane Sky, which is going to basically turn everything off so you can't see it. And then we're going to add a Taurus. Set this to Z. Expand it up. And thin it out a bit. 20, maybe. Doesn't really matter. Go with 500 for now. And we will add an emissive texture to it. So in our texture, go ahead and add black body emission. Surface brightness, and we'll make that a little yellowish. Now we've got our basic lighting set up. What we're going to do now is we're going to start making the materials. But what I want to make sure I do is make sure we're in the right kernel. Because if we're using specular material, you don't really want to be. You can do it, but direct lighting is just not going to look as good. You're not going to get the penetration. So we're going to switch over to path tracing. And we're going to just do some arbitrary settings for a moment. Obviously, these are things that are going to vary on your scene and your computer. Turn on AI light. And there we go. So let's go ahead and start with our first texture. We're going to grab a specular material. We're going to apply it to our sphere. It's kind of going to get shiny and disappear. We're going to turn a camera off here so you can actually see what's going on. We're also going to turn off our scatters for now. So first things first, we are going to make sure check fake shadows is on. In roughness, we're going to add about 0.1. And then we are going to go into our medium and add a scattering medium. For this, we're going to probably bring it down to about 25. Make our volume step length about 6. About 0.9 on that. And then we're going to add an RGB spectrum. Copy that down into this guy. You can just drag and copy it. Then we're going to make this guy like a bluish color. Now what I found out when uh, messing around with this is in order to get the color matters for how the thickness, I guess you could say, the penetration, the uh, scattering. So I found when I was doing this, when I was practicing that this was a good one. And then what I ended up doing in order to light the inside, let's turn our camera back on, is I actually added an octane light. We're going to have mine set up here, but you can go to objects, lights, just an octane area light. And in these settings, I changed it to a sphere. So now you can kind of see how we're doing this lighting. And then because I added a light inside, that's the, the blue is actually causing it to be red, which is interesting. We're actually going to go in here and change this to, I think, 2500, which is going to change that a bit, which really doesn't matter, honestly. But, And then go back into our material here, go into our transmission, and the texture here, we're going to add a gradient. And then in the gradient, we're going to change it to 3D spherical, add a little bit of turbulence. Also, we're going to turn our camera off again so we can kind of see this better. We're going to drag this over now so we can actually see what's going on. For this color, we're going to grab like a nice bright, like, well, kind of just a faded yellow. For the inside, and over here, we're going to do like a, almost like a flesh tone of pink. And then we're going to go up, we're going to add some bump. So for the bump, we're going to add noise. 
And for the noise, we're going to grab electric. And we can leave it at the default. Again, it, it's personal taste. It depends on how, you know, you feel about it. I think we're going to crank this light up a little bit. We're also going to add a octane tag so we don't actually have to see that in our render or in the thing. I think that was actually might be too much orange on that guy. Yeah, that one's supposed to be yellow. This one's the one that's supposed to be really, really orange. All right. So then now you can see what happens. We're also going to do a little bit of keyframing for our lights. So for our actual light inside, I'm going to keyframe the size of it. So at the beginning and the end, the, the light will be the size it is now at 100 centimeters. And then at 150 in the middle, when this thing's kind of large and blown up, we're going to make this guy 200. So you can kind of see through it a bit. And it gives that lighting effect from the inside.